Good morning, church. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran's uh, church on site as well as online on this fifth Saturday of Easter. Now we are honored that you are worshiping with us from wherever you may be, whether you're here in our sanctuary, in your home, in another state, or even country. We have a special message for those who are joining online. During this worship service, we celebrate synchronous communion. This is a time to share communion with the Resurrection Church community of faith as you worship in your home or wherever you may be. Now, to participate more fully in our online worship service, you may wish to gather a few items as we begin, including candles and matches. And I invite you to light your candles now as we have lit ours. Bread or crackers, wine or juice, and the bulletin can be downloaded from our Facebook page. So whether you're joining us online or here on site, you can use the Facebook chat to share your prayer request before the end of the sermon, and we'll add them to the prayers of intercession. Now, for those of you who are in the sanctuary, we do invite you to use your handheld devices, check in, share the piece, and chat with those online, and be sure to share the service on your Facebook page, as well as like us, follow us to be notified of special events and worship opportunities. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching out to each other, showing love for God through our worship and praise, and caring for all of God's creation. Resurrection Lutheran Church is located on the original and ancestral homelands of the Manahoic people, and we give thanks for their presence here since time immemorial. We wish to recognize and honor all of our indigenous siblings who have and continue to call this land their home. Immediately following the service, join us on site for the adult forum as they can uh, discuss the book, Speaking Christian, by Marcus Borg. Wednesday morning women's Bible study continues with the book, Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus, and they meet on site and online each Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. A congregational meeting is called for May 12th at 11.15 a.m. to be held immediately after the 10 a.m. service. This meeting, like I said, will begin at 11.15. The purpose of this meeting is to vote to transfer funds from the Mission Endowment Fund to the, into the Mission and Ministry Fund. Please plan to stay for a few minutes after the service. Yes, I know it is Mother's Day. We will make it quick. A Zoom link will be provided for those who are unable to attend on site. For more information, please contact, uh, where is she? There she is, Nancy Suplicki, or you can contact me. Our email addresses are in the RLC weekly update. Power in the Spirit is an inspirational conference for people for all ages who wish to explore God's call to service through joyous worship, Bible studies, keynote addresses, workshops, games, and fellowship. And it will be held on the campus of Roanoke College in Salem, Virginia, this summer, Thursday, June 13th through Saturday, June 15th. And this theme centers around Esther, the risk, risk taker, and the story of Esther is one of God's faithful presence, deliverance from oppression, and bold service to the neighbor. Now, early bird registration ends tomorrow, and their general registration closes on May 29th. The Spotsylvanians Chorus will present Earth, Wind, and Choir right here on the Resurrection Campus on May 4th and 5th. Tickets are $10 at the door and students are free. School Dressing Days 2024 is ramping up already. School Dressing Days is sponsored by the Interfaith Community Council, of which RLC is a member. RLC has been asked to provide pairs of girls' and boys' socks of all sizes, as well as full-size tubes of toothpaste. And we have set a goal of 1,000 socks and 1,000 tubes of toothpaste. Okay, hang on now. By May 23rd, so we're going to have to get down and get to work real fast. There are a number of ways that you can participate in this exciting ministry. You can bring your donations right here to the RLC campus or have them shipped directly from your favorite retailer to RLC. So whether you choose to give monetarily so we can do the shopping for you or you are having items shipped, be sure to mark it Sock Drive. Um, let's see, the Youth Yard Sale Fundraiser. And where is she? Come on up. And we do need to have you on the microphone. So all of our friends can hear you out there and on landline. All right. So we're having the rummage sale on June 1st for the youth going to New Orleans this summer. Uh, you guys can start bringing donations in next Sunday, May 5th. Uh, 
if you did not grab a flyer, there are where the signups are. Um, signups are for large furniture. If you need help getting those to church, you can sign up for that. Um, if you have a truck or trailer that can pick up those large, large items and you'd be willing to help with that, you can also sign up for that. And if you would like to contribute to the bake sale, you can also sign up for that. Uh, all the signups and the extra flyers are in the narthex. Um, so yeah, take a flyer, give it to, if you know, have other friends or family that would have stuff, you can give that to them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our youth fundraiser is to raise funds for five youth and two adults to attend the National Youth Gathering to be held in New Orleans in July 16th through 20th. Information about all activities is included in the RLC weekly update posted on our website, resurrectionpeople.org, and on our Facebook page. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God by Gay and Wayne Lauterbach in memory of their son, David Lee. Leading us in worship today are Patty Dunn, music director, the voices of RLC, the praise ensemble, and David Norquist is our lector. Our video production team today is Robert Scholl on camera, Dave Evers on sound, and Jeff Slunt is running visuals. I'm Reverend Heidi Moore, honored to be pastor here at RLC, and I invite you to please stand as you feel called or able as we begin worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Join us for the call to worship, Christ is risen. one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Here in our baptismal font, look, this is where water is. Here is water, our life, alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark called your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land, and in the desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. I, hallelujah. I invite you to share the peace as you feel comfortable. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Kim and Charlotte Matuzik, Joy Curley, Terry Evers, uh, June Jenkins, and let's see, I think that's all who have checked in so far. So let us turn to the rear camera and say, peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We can um, <clears throat> we continue with our, our gathering hymn, Let the River Flow. The lost man say, I am found in him. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Bear with us as we switch instruments. She gets set. That's okay. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Give us your son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to be seated. first reading is from the 8th chapter of Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him, the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. As he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us one not love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of the Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. God has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment 
and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise to welcome the gospel in song. to John the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, and those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. And if we have any kiddos here who are um, comfortable coming on up as we live stream this morning. So this morning I have brought with me casserole dish okay so i think y'all laughed so you know what the significance of the casserole dish is is that when somebody um has a, a crisis in their family such as um, a health crisis or maybe a loved one has died what do we do to show our love and care and concern for our neighbors but to bake a casserole okay and fill their freezer with casseroles. Okay, that's how we show love. You know what, here at RLC, that's how we show love to our neighbors and our strangers and even our enemies, is that we feed people, right? We feed people. Friday bags, I'm, I can't wait until the end of the year when we tally up and know that, figure out how many Friday bags we've given. I know it's over 1,500. Yes, we do fifth Saturday meal at Brisbane. Uh, not, I'm sorry, at Micah Ministries. We also feed at Brisbane and do other things, as you heard this morning, that we're also having a sock and toothpaste drive for our friends for school dressing days for the Interfaith Community Council. That's how we show love for each other. We show love through feeding people. We sh th show love through giving. And that's what Jesus says for us to do, that we are to love our neighbors, even if it's in a casserole dish. Amen. Okay, so today we continue to follow our Easter worship series to be continued. As we heard on Easter, the Gospel of, Gospel of Mark ended with, they were frightened for. Mark's Gospel leaves us hanging there like grapes on a vine. And we're journeying with those first disciples through the early chapters of the book of Acts as they work out what, means it, is, what it means to abide in Jesus, to be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. But before we embark on the journey with the Ethiopian eunuch, let's step back for a moment into the Monday, into Monday Thursday, the eve of Good Friday and of Jesus' death. That's where we find ourselves today in our gospel. So Jesus knew that his time was growing brief. He knew that he was physically leaving their midst in just a few short hours. He knew crisis was coming. And so Jesus is engaged in urgent pastoral care 
seeking to reassure the disciples that they will not be abandoned. So in this extended leave taking, it's called the final discourse. Jesus is actually saying to them, come closer. And I mean really close. And so he starts out with, I am the vine and you are the branches. Now the disciples understood the pruning part and what was involved with the care and feeding of grapevines. But what bothered them was the metaphor Jesus chose, that Jesus was the vine and they were the branches. Now that was really, really close and connected. And you, we all know that as um, vines grow, they'll, they'll twist around each other and they'll, they'll even um, do the, they'll, they'll just get really, really close and connected. And eventually those branches become vines themselves. And pruning is about abundance. So Jesus switched it up and said, abide in me as I abide in you. Now you cannot get much closer than that. So when you add as I abide in you, as it is written in John 15, 4, the, deep, the meaning deepens. It's as if Jesus is saying to his friends, to his disciples, yes, you are going to feel abandoned. But that is not what is happening. I will not leave you alone. So don't worry. We'll still be together, but in a different and more intimate way. As disciples, you are walking in my footsteps. And in the days, you will become my hands and feet for a world that desperately needs healing and good news. Now, another way to translate the Greek word meno is to dwell. So what Jesus is saying, just as God dwells in me, okay, just as God dwells in me, lives in me, I will live or dwell in you, and you will live or dwell in me. And you are going to be so close that you will hear the heart beat of God. That's how close I'm going to hold you. That's how close we will be, just like a branch is to its vine in God's vineyard. Now, the way the verb is rendered in Greek, it's very close to the southern y'all, okay? So, pointing, so Jesus is not pointing at them as individuals, but he's saying, y'all will dwell in me. Vines and dwellings are the images of mutuality and relationship because Jesus' love and kingdom of God is that inclusive. So I don't think it would be stretching it to say, all you all, okay? All you all, I'm going to hold all you all that close. All you all, I'm going to dwell in you. Okay. And all you all extends outward, making the circle of inclusion larger and larger. Now, I think we all know the pain of being excluded. Jesus did too as he told parables about festive banquets and parties in which some are included and some are excluded. And in these parables of embrace and, in, and exclusion, the people who presume themselves to be the in crowd end up being the out crowd, and those who we tend to think as the out crowd or the excluded end up included. So it is in the first days of the church, the first Christians had to learn just like we have had to learn and relearn, that a primary implication of the gospel is all y'all are included. All you all are included. Now, who is this person, Philip? So looking back into the earlier verses of Acts 8, we learned that he is called to be one of the first deacons, um, at this point, Stephen, the first martyr of the church, has been killed, and everyone went to Samaria, including Philip. And so we read in Acts 8, 5 through 6, Philip went down to a city in Samaria and began to preach Christ to them. And the crowds were united by what they heard Philip say and the signs they saw him perform, and they gave him their undivided attention. And his success in Samaria leads Peter and John to go there as well. Now we hear in the scriptures this morning that Philip is directed by an angel to get up. And it's the same word uh, that is used for resurrection. So Philip is directed to get up and go out to the middle of the desert 
at an unlikely time of the day, noon, when it is hottest, to encounter an Ethiopian sitting in his chariot, pouring over the Isaiah scroll and trying to make sense of it. Now, the country of Ethiopia was considered to be an exotic, far away place with great riches. And Barbara Brown Taylor writes, the Ethiopian was someone wealthy enough to ride in a chariot, educated enough to read Greek, devout enough to study the prophet Isaiah and humble enough to know that he cannot understand what he is reading without help. And he's also hospitable. So when Philip speaks to him at the direction of the Holy Spirit, the Ethiopian invites the talkative pedestrian to join him in his chariot. And so Philip interprets for him Philip's not so much giving an answer, but a testimony. And so his answer was not a matter of conveying knowledge. It was a witness to an encounter which helped the eunuch to make sense of what was already present to him. The sheep led to the slaughter is Jesus. And in so doing this, relationship is opened and boundaries are crossed. What would keep me from being baptized, asked the Ethiopian. Well, probably in Philip's mind at that point, there was a lot. Because he was not a Jew. He had no instruction in the faith. He was of another race, of another nationality, and he was a eunuch. And according to Deuteronomy 23, as such... He was prohibited from even entering the grounds of the temple. According to God, nothing prevents him from being baptized. Because God created all people and created us to be in fellowship with one another. And all are welcome. And when Christ says all, he means all. So a miraculous spring bubbles forth in the middle of the desert where there was none before. The Ethiopian is baptized and a new family, a new nation is being constructed here by the expansive work of the Holy Spirit and nothing keeps anyone out. Nothing keeps anyone out. Catherine McLean, writing for Christian Century. The world will change when all are welcome, when we lean on one another, when we trust the source of all life, the risen Christ, the God who is in it together with us. And then we'll be reaching deep through the vine into our roots, trusting the strength of that vine and the care of the vine grower. And then we will abide, we will dwell with each other well. In the Gospel of John, we are reminded once again that we are not merely to follow and obey Jesus, but to live in Jesus as he lives in us. To dwell in Jesus as Jesus dwells in us. To abide in Jesus as Jesus abides in us. And to be the people that God has made us to be. To love with wild abandon. To live and love like Jesus. Or as someone has said, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you, and the Jesus in you loves the Jesus in me. And we will have joined the outsiders. Amen. We continue our worship with our hymn of the day, For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide, to dwell in you always. God of grace. 
for the well-being of the earth and for all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters. We uh, pray also for the Rappahannock and the Rapidon rivers. Renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations and for all those in, thor in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations that justice and peace may reign. God of mercy, grace, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness and, un and or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression and seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, this day we remember Terry Cuckuck, Joy Curley, Tom Bailey, Kate and Dennis, a friend with vision problems, those waiting results of tests, Vince Weimer, Bonnie Shackle, and all those that we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all our feeding ministries, including Friday bags for kiddos, Fifth Saturday, Angel Tree, Food Baskets, and Brisbane Center, for school dressing days, socks, and tubes of toothpaste, and for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at last, bring us to the heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear your prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We thank you for your continued support of Resurrection's mission and ministry. That as we reflect the love of Christ through reaching and loving and caring for all of our neighbors and God's creation, because of your generosity, we continue to expand the fellowship outreach online as well as on site, grow our worship practice, including online worship, and support outreach ministries such as Micah Ministries, Thurban Brisbane Center, the Angel Tree Gifts, and Friday Bags for Kiddos. We, again, we, we give thanks for your prayers, for your generosity, and for your presence in these endeavors in our mission and ministry. Uh, during our, our offertory, the QR code will come up, and we invite those who are online to join us in mission and ministry by using that car, QR code, and <clears throat> that will take you to our giving portal. For those of you here, again, we invite you to use the QR code as well, and we do have our offering plate back in the narthex.
rise for the offertory response. you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, <clears throat> almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of, your sa of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and with Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name, and join their unending hymn.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known in, to us in the breaking of the bread. Come, eat at God's table. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Communion can be done one of two ways today. Uh, we invite you, if you are, feel called or able, to come to the communion rail and receive communion there. Uh, we ask that you come up to the uh, center aisle and depart by the side aisle, leaving your cups in the reception bowls on either side. We offer gluten-free bread as well as grape juice, which will be down there on that uh, table shortly. Come, all is prepared. Christ has called each and every one of us, woman, man, young, old, abuser, abused, rainbow of race, gender, color, gay, straight. Everyone has a place at this table. And when Christ says all, he means all. Amen. As we sing Lamb of God, please prepare your communion. receive communion in their places, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And for those who receive communion in their places, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you.
shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. I invite you at this time to take part in a RLC tradition of holding hands as we celebrate this wonderful gift that Jesus has given to us. resurrection, power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. We invite you to continue with our sending hymn, Alleluia, we sing your praise. Be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.